All right, today we have a, I think it's out of about a 2011, 2012 Ford Ranger, uh, probably about a 3.0 engine, um, which would make this a 5R44E. And this belongs to a family member of somebody here at the shop, and they were complaining of how we're shifting on the 2-3 shift. Um, as far as I know, there's no codes. Um, it, I, I didn't drive the car, but it got, it got to the point where we went to we went to pick the car up because the guy didn't want to drive it anymore. So the manager drove it back, and he said, yeah, something doesn't feel right on a 2-3 shift. So first thing that we did is we put the car up in the air and we pulled the uh, servos out because, you know, this is a 5R 44E, which is 5-speed. So the third band, or third, you know, is the rear band, second gear is the front band. So it's, you know, one band's coming off, one's coming on, we figured we'd probably find something there. Uh, actually, and we didn't, but actually he says as it started to heat up is when it got started to um, malfunction. Cold, he said it worked okay. So I'm not really sure what we're gonna find here. You know, he wasn't even describing it as a flare on the shift. He just said there was definitely something wrong. He described it more of like a hitch. Uh, so, I guess what we'll do is open this up and see if we can actually see anything. I'm just going to really chunk this down because if we happen to see something, we're probably just going to uh, repair it and put the trans back together. Um, so, I'll get a little closer here and uh, we will open this up and... I guess see what we find. Not really sure, like I said, what we're gonna find. But um, just on the outside here, I did want to say, uh, and this is again like about a 2011 and 2001, they added this intermediate shaft speed sensor, or they call it ISS. That also could stand for input speed sensor, but it's intermediate shaft speed sensor. Uh, that was added. Um, and then you have your output speed, here are your solenoids, and there is a wire clip here that we're going to take out. Should we have to take the harness out, so we'll do that now. And then your linkage and your uh, rain switch. And I really think that's about it, so I'll get a little closer, and what we're going to do is um, basically just chunk it down. You know, I don't, I don't think we're going to really find too much. I'm not really sure what we're going to find, if anything. Uh, but at least I can, you know, at least we'll take the thing apart. Alrighty, so uh, let me get a little closer and we'll start tearing this apart. Alright, so I guess we'll take this bell housing off first. Intermediate shaft speed sensor out. And that came right out. And let me get a different socket for this one. Okay. 
So we're going to throw this out of the way. Alright, we got all the bolts out. So let's just give it a tap. servos out already. So let's see if I can just move. I don't think I can. I think I'm going to have to loosen this adjustment here. So this band uh, looks good. Take the overdrive drum. And run it. And here's the sun gear. break here, which I normally change on a, uh, you know, on an off, on an off, on an overhaul. Alright, so what we got to do now, in order to get the center support out, there's the kind of like a bracket here for the overdrive band strut and stuff so all that's got to come out through the bottom here's a pin that holds it in so we're gonna have to turn this thing over and take the valve body out here is the uh i guess the uh, input speed sensor all right so that is on internal so we gotta also Get that out. All right, now we have, I guess, ten millimeter bolts here. Is it possible eight? No, they are eight. I'm gonna need this. I gotta get my eight.
very clean. All right, next is the filter. Same problem, uh, but at one point we had uh, put solenoids in the trans. I think we uh, might have installed an EPC solenoid, and this is the number two solenoid. If you actually have a flare uh, on the two three shift, usually this is mechanically stuck or bad. I've seen that a couple of times. Disconnect these solenoids here. We leave the harness in. All right, this one on the end. This one on the end here is your lockup solenoid. And then we got the shift solenoids and your ETC. Okay. So I'm going to pull this valve body off. And then we got to disconnect the input speed sensor and take that out, along with the center support. Possible blown gasket. So I'm going to take that into consideration if I don't see anything. All right, maybe I'll actually take this uh, once we get this thing down. Uh, I'll take this. Um, I'll take this apart. We'll take a look at that uh, gasket. But that's something right there. fingers on that. I gotta get a needle nose plug. I'm gonna unplug the uh, input speed sensor and we'll pull that out. Let's see. Okay. Take it out of the little locked in here. And as 
there. All right, now. We're going to do the center support bolt, and then we'll take the center support out. This is a T30. All right, we're going to take this out here. This is the overdrive band. All right, so that uh, nut actually, that little nut is actually in there pretty good. So we can leave it in there. Okay, snap ring. All right, this is the chamfer, faces up. Hey, these rings, everything looks good. Okay, washer. There, washer here. All right, now I guess what we got to do here is take the linkage off. I don't want to ruin the switch because the the adjustment nut. And you really won't be able to get at it. All right, so let's see what we got here. Well, we 22. Yeah, all right, so let's see if we can get this off and take the switch out. I want to hold the uh, linkage piece here so it doesn't, because uh, it is still attached to the switch, so I want to hold it. So it doesn't really move. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to take the ring switch off. I actually thought I was going to be able to get away with leaving it on, but I guess not. Just get it set up for this. I'm gonna just use a uh, use a wrench here and uh, just loosen it enough probably to get this out because that switch is stuck on there. Just give me just give me one second here. See if we can get this out. Okay. And here is the correct drum, which actually is fourth band. That's third. Alright, let's get the strut out. 
And all right, so this goes through here. This hits the back of the piston, hits that. That gets hooked up like that and gets hooked up to the band. All right, bow drum. You know, I'm not seeing too much here. Uh, so you have this brass collar here. Bearing, and you have another bearing there. All right, another bearing on top of here, and your shell. Gotta be careful if you ever have to change the shell. You know, with the this is what the uh, intermediate. Uh, speed sensor reads. And there's also a bearing, well, it's on here, but you know, it probably goes on the back of the planet. And this looks good. All right, so now we've got a little snap ring. This is like a lube dam, you know, keeps the oil back there to keep everything uh, lubricated. Uh, okay, now we need pliers here. Uh, we need the snap ring pliers with the eyelids to get that little snap ring out, which will be which will be these. band drum which also houses the low spray. Here is a wash uh, bearing. Goes there. Uh, and the reverse too. So now we'll uh, get the tail off. Looks like I'm going to need a larger socket. Probably these top is 17. Looks like 17 and I guess 13. So, so far it looks like an impossible blown gasket. I will let you know. Uh, if that was the problem when uh, I do post this. Here's the 
parking pool and spring. Okay. Should be a washer in here. Yes, there is. Three tape washer. Here is the what the parking pool fits into. This is what the output shaft speed sensor reads. And the input shaft speed speed sensor uh, reads uh, this ring on the OD planet. Reads this here. That's all for determining, you know, shift strategy, converter apply. Alright, so the case, uh, case pretty much is uh, stripped here, not much more. Alright, so what I'm going to do, I like to get rid of some of this oil. Uh, so just give me a few minutes, let me get rid of some of this oil and stuff. I'm going to open this valve body and take a look at that gasket because I think that's what we're going to be looking at, a uh, possible blown gasket here. As he said, this worked okay cold, but hot, um, it, it wasn't so good. So just give me a few minutes, let me get set up for that. All right, so let's open up this uh, valve body here. Now this thing felt a little loose. But I mean that really shouldn't matter because <clears throat> all these other bolts are held down. But looks like we're going to be dealing with a blown gasket here. You know, we felt uh, I never drove it, but something was felt, and the person that does drive it got to the point where he didn't want to drive the car anymore. So I guess it got uh, when it got probably got very hot. It probably got bad. So let's just take this off here and. Yeah, it looks like we got, I mean, this is exactly what it looks like here. So this part was sticking out. So it's very well could be dealing with, uh, I mean, that's the only thing I really see. We got this section here, this section here, and this here also was out. So that's the only thing that I really see. I'm gonna actually leave it just like this. Uh, so they can, so he can see it when he comes in. But that's gonna go like that. So you do have some channels. You know, you do have some channels that are open. And it looks like one of them could be, you know, uh, uh, for the solenoid. The channels for the solenoid here. But I, I don't really see too much more than that. Alright, so that's that. So I'm just going to put this one aside here. And uh, when you're working on these uh, 5R55s here, uh, 5R55E or even a 4R55E, um, and you turn this valve body upside down, you have little clips uh, that can fall out. So you want to be careful with that. And let me see if I can get one out and show you what they look like. Because there's common ones that fall out. Now they don't want to come out. Oh, here we go. Okay. All right. So that's one of the clips there that can. They look like that when they when they fall out. Okay. So that's back in place. And you got one, two, three, four check balls. Uh, well, this is a, a 2011. You know, there used to be a relief valve here, which was eliminated. Uh, but there's still one here. This, I believe, is for torque converter clutch. But, okay. Put that aside here. When we have this open, let's double check the description, which I'm sure I'll find. I think what I'll probably do is wind up cleaning the case up, cleaning the, uh, not even going to open the pump, uh, cleaning the housing up. Yeah, these are directional. They don't look too bad. I 
I'm not sure how far he wants to go if we're going to put a kit in this thing or if, you know, we're just going to go with the valve body gaskets. I'm not sure even the mileage. I try to look up the paperwork so I can, you know, check out the, uh, the information, but nothing was even written down on this and there's no codes. All right, so all the clutches are, are good. No oil was uh, nice and red. So, again, I think we're dealing possibly with a blown gasket. I'm going with that. I don't really see too much more, but when I do uh, post the video, I will let you know if that actually fixed it or what fixed it, if that's the case. And right here are the servo pistons. All right, this is uh, the second and fifth. Has a lighter spring in it. All right. I mean, these are, are soft. Uh, you know, got some decent, you know, seals aren't hard, they are still intact. This is third. Got a heavier spring. Too. All right, so with that, uh, about a 2011 Ford Ranger. Uh, I'm thinking it's either a 2.4 or a 3.0. Not 100% sure of the motor size, but um, I do not believe it's the big motor, the 4.0, uh, which would make this a 5R44E. And we had a um, what was describing as a, maybe a hitch, not really a flare on the 2-3 shift and we found this gasket here blown out. You know, you got a channel even right here that's that's open. That can cause a problem. That gasket was out. So, let's see um, uh, how far we're going to go with this. And again, I'll post the results uh, probably in the description when I do put this up. Uh, and I guess that's about it. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day, and we'll see you next one.